Hey, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome back to San Bernardino Zoo, where our Australia area is coming along very nicely indeed, and it is time for another habitat. This path here, which takes guests from the entrance round to the koala experience and the wallaby walkabout, is where we're going to be building. We're going to be building a classic space filler habitat, a habitat that fills the space on this side of the path between here and the edge of the zoo. And the animal living in the habitat is one I have never used before. I am very excited to get started with it. It's the wombat. Now I've tried to make each habitat in the Australia area different to represent um, how long this area has been in the zoo for and how many changes it's gone through over the years and today's no different. What I want to do today is build a simple rustic habitat that curls around the side of this path and has probably had loads of different species in it since it was first built. I'm basing it on a habitat I saw in a little zoo here in England called Ponderosa Zoo. The habitat in England was for Scottish wildcats, um, or it is at the moment, I don't know if it's always been that way. It's a really simple brick and wood construction, the kind of thing we don't have in San Bernardino Zoo yet, so I thought it'd be a great idea to put one in now. So we're going to be using a mixture of the sandstone that you see at the bottom and then some wood planks. I went through, I think I went through every wood plank in the game trying to decide which one to use. Um, these were the front runners for a while, but I decided in the end I wanted a, a lighter wood to give it more of an Australian feel. I feel like dark wood isn't a big thing in Australia, although I could be wrong. So we'll get some mesh in here. And the way that we're going to build this, we'll put the uh, the final planks in in a second, but the way that we're going to build this is in sections so that we can get it to wrap around the path. Uh, I used to really struggle with stuff like this. I think, if I recall correctly, it was an aviary built by Delay Designer a while ago where I saw her use a technique similar to this where you build it in sections and then you can rotate each section and then just fill in the gaps between them once you've copied them to get it into the shape that you want. So that's what we're going to be doing here and it's a really useful technique to use when you've got, as you can see, a curved path that you want to build a habitat round. We'll get this first section done. Um, I'm going to make a massive error <laughs> in a second, which is decide that I'm roughly happy with it, so I'll start copying it around. You really, really should make sure you've perfected the design and got all the decoration on it you want before you start copying. Otherwise, you're going to have to do it many times on each section. Um, I'll spare you the pain of watching me do that, but that is why I had to do. But these are the, um, the planks that I'm going to go with, a nice, um, like I say, kind of rustic Australian feel and we're going to just keep adding planks and mesh until we've got this one section completely done. And the way this technique works, we're going to build the front and the back of this section and then a small part of the side that we're doing here and then that is the basis that we're going to use to copy down the path and complete the rest of it and then we can just fit in the sides. Before we do that though, I have a very, very exciting announcement to make. Let's move to the other side of the zoo and I'll tell you all about it. So this is one of my favorite little viewing areas just next to the Jaguar Dome. And today I have built something very exciting here. Welcome to the San Bernardino Zoo Explorers Club. Yes, I'm finally launching the membership option on the channel. Let me tell you all about it. The San Bernardino Zoo Explorers Club is your chance to support our channel and join San Bernardino Zoo in an uh, official capacity, so to speak. If you hit the join button on the channel, you will get a San Bernardino Zoo Explorers Club badge next to all your comments on the channel, access to a members only area on the Discord that I've launched today, and most importantly, you will get your name on San Bernardino Zoo Explorers Club plaque that you have just seen, and your name will be in the zoo forever. There are three different tiers that you can join at but everyone gets the same benefits all the info and the link to the discord is in the description so check it out down below i look forward to seeing you in the discord where we can chat thank you as always for your support whether you join or not let's get back to the build we're almost done with this first section of the habitat here we're just going to copy the front to the back spin it round and then move these things over because planet zoo still doesn't have a mirror tool um we need to delete these uh, railings as well they won't be needed at the back and there we go, that's the, uh, the front pretty much done. Just a couple more bits of mesh on the roof. And we're ready to start cloning this all the way down the path. So we'll just get that in exactly the right place. So finicky working with mesh, but it looks so good when it's finished. Um, I'm also gonna raise the terrain on the inside of the habitat, um, as we often do with these kind of habitats. Just brings the animals closer to the eye level of the guests looks really good and that's basically what that brick wall is there for to keep the terrain up and then we can start copying so all we do is we move it across line it up with the angle of the path 
and then we get something that looks great from the front and terrible from the back. But all we need to do to fix that is place smaller pieces of wood and mesh in between the two sections that we have. And once we've done this and we've got everything in the right place and this one section is looking good, the next time we copy a section along, we'll be copying the second section, which already has the bits that join it up to the previous section. And all you need to do from then is make tiny little adjustments to that on each section that you copy. And it's actually a really quick process once you've done the first one. It's nowhere near as time consuming as you think it will be. I've got a real soft spot for these sort of path filler habitats. Um, just little habitats, but the kind of thing you see everywhere in real zoos. Um, and I think it's because um, I, and well, not just me, everyone really who plays Planet Zoo likes to build big impressive habitat, especially if you're, um, if you're on YouTube, you're trying to make each habitat more spectacular than the last. And sometimes it's so much fun to just build the kind of habitat that goes next to a path in a, in a real zoo. Now, I said little, this is not really that little. Obviously we're in franchise mode and the wombats demand huge amounts of space. So there's quite a lot of path to fill with this habitat, but uh, I've kept it shallow in terms of the, the depth of the habitat from the path going back to represent what the habitat looked like in real life. This is probably twice the size of the habitat in real life. Although wombats are maybe twice the size of Scottish wildcats, so perhaps that is appropriate. This is the end part here. So now we've got to the end of the path. We're just gonna fill in the two ends with some more mesh and some more wood, pretty much keeping the, uh, the design the same. And then just a little bit of tidying up and that is the front part of the habitat done. Now there's gonna be an indoor area as well. Reason for that is that wombats are mainly nocturnal. So it does depend on the weather. Um, they like to come outside during the day when it's a bit cooler. But to be honest, in Southern California, there's not gonna be a whole lot of uh, cooler going on. I didn't want to build a whole night house just for the wombats. The only other um, nocturnal animal that we really have from Australasia is the platypus and I'd already designed the uh, the ridiculous platypus habitat that we built, so I certainly wasn't gonna build a night house just for the wombat. And loads of zoos display nocturnal animals in uh, daylight enclosures anyway. You can often persuade the animals to come out at certain times just from the times that you feed them. What we're gonna do now is cover up the gap between the path and the habitat. So one of the frustrations I always experience in Planet Zoo, but for once I actually remembered before I started building, is that when guests stand on a path, once they're viewing a habitat, they will often step forward off the path. So if you build your habitat so it's touching the path, you can end up with the guests actually being inside the habitat. Uh, I'm not sure the guests actually know they're inside a habitat, but it just looks really bad when you're looking at it. So I built this one further back from the path, which means we've got the, the gap between the habitat and the path that we need to sort out. So I'm using some more of the sandstone to fill in those gaps with a little step and it takes a lot of rotating and sinking, etc. It looks really good when it's finished. Onto the indoor part of the habitat. So I'm building this using the same sections that we used for the rest of the habitat so I can get the scale right and make sure it's all gonna fit in nicely. But this will all be covered up with some more bricks so we get a nice solid inside with a proper roof, etc. so that it's nice and cool in here. We can control the climate. I want some of the wood planks showing on the inside still. So this enables us to get that nicely matched up before we start putting the bricks in. Before we move on to that, I just wanna do a little something for the inside though. If you cast your minds back to the Asian small clawed otter episode, we built some little boxes for the otters to sleep in. I discovered that wombats need something similar. So with this habitat being one of an older habitat that's had loads of different animals in it over the years, it's not gonna have some incredibly high tech replica of the wombat's burrow system inside it. What it's gonna have is something that um, replicates that for the wombats. So according to the animal care manual I read, the wombats require a box of one meter by one meter by one meter. So slightly larger than the otters, which is why I'm not just uh, reusing that. But basically this tiny little box, which is pretty much smaller than a wombat, I'm assuming they curl up when they get in there. This makes them feel like they're in a burrow, keeps them happy, and is obviously a much cheaper and easier option for a zoo than building a giant fake burrow system with viewing windows and stuff like that. That is something that really interests me though, um, the concept of building one of those, and that is gonna be something that we will explore with a future animal in the zoo. So that's a cute little box there. We're gonna put three of these in because we're gonna have a pair of wombats and hopefully a baby. And then we're gonna move on to building something cool for the center of the habitat, 
So you know I like my habitats to have centerpieces and even a really cheap little habitat like this, I wanna have something unique in it. So what we're gonna build is a little sand pit. I thought that would be really cute. We're gonna remake the enrichment items from the game, but we don't have a sand pit. Uh, we've got the forage box and the mud bath. So we're gonna make something similar looking and fill it with sand. Uh, we'll even put a little sand castle and a spade in for them. And it could be something that the, the keepers would come in and make little um, you know, sand castles or whatever in the morning, whenever they're coming into the habitat. And then doubtless the wombats will destroy them in seconds. And it's just like a nice little bit of enrichment for them. So we've got the, um, the box built. We'll fill it with sand. We'll come back and detail that in a second. We're gonna drop in a few of the sleeping logs that we built for the desert house. They seem appropriate here. We'll put a few more enrichment items in, continue the dot motif that we've used throughout the Australian area, and then we're gonna extend that up onto the habitat itself. So at this stage of the build, I was feeling that maybe it was a little too rustic, a little too plain. So I've added some orange paint to the um, pillars of wood that support the top of this. And then we're gonna put this dot motif along the top as well. And then we're gonna finish the indoor area. So I'm putting um, breeze blocks around the side. I wanted it to look really simple, but again, I decided that was a bit plain. So we're gonna replace this with more of the sandstone bricks that we've used everywhere else. I didn't like the way the gray was visible there. Um, we'll put a simple asphalt roof on it. Unlike the walls, the roof isn't visible from the path, so we can be as simple as we like with that. And once the roof is done, I'm gonna show you a little trick which I like to use. I use it quite a lot actually, which I don't think I've shown in this series before. I showed it in Tecton Zoo, but I don't think we've done it in San Bernardino Zoo. So what we do is we take a little 2D item like this, one of Lion's amazing signs from the workshop, which I like to put everywhere possible in the zoo because they look so good. Now, normally you'd have this on a wall or on glass. So it's fine that it's two dimensional, like a sticker, which is how it's been designed. But I wanna use this on the mesh of this habitat which creates a problem because obviously you're not going to put a big sticker on mesh that makes no sense so how do we make it three-dimensional all we do is we copy it change the color so it looks like a you know a backing board so it's all white and then move it fractionally behind the original and then we copy it again and do that maybe six or seven times and because of the way the graphics works in Planet Zoo with objects this thin instead of looking like seven one pixel wide objects behind each other it appears completely solid um, which is amazing. It means you can put it on the fence like this and you just get a really solid looking object from a two dimensional object, which is something that could be really useful. You can do the same trick with text as well. I do that all the time. And there we go, looking good. We've got just three more things to do. Firstly, we're gonna put a nice Australian motif, which I have copied from Taronga Zoo on the inside of these walls, just using these pieces here. Won't be particularly visible, but I just didn't like having a completely plain wall, um, to be honest. Then we're gonna drop in some of the stalactites that we use all over the zoo to provide some rocks for the background of the habitat. And then finally, we are gonna make a sandcastle. So we're gonna use one of the flower pots from the conservation pack. They've probably got the best shape for this, I think, and they've got a really nice texture to them. And most importantly, they're flexi color. So we'll get a nice sandy color going on here. Get that to match the sand below. Uh, drop something on to cover up that hole in the middle there. I think the best piece for that will be the full stop from the Noto pack. That's a really useful piece, use that all the time. We'll get it in the right place so you can't see the hole. Change the color so it matches the flower pot and we have a sand castle. Let's get the wombats in. I did not know they did that with the cardboard boxes. That is such a cool little animation. These guys are absolutely adorable. Here's the habitat, very different to anything else that we have in the zoo. I really like the way it fills in that path. It's pretty seamless between the path and the habitat and it blocks out the car park, which is very useful. I think the lighter wood and the sandstone go really nicely with the orange path. And here is the sand pit. We built three boxes and we have filled them already. We've already got a little baby. Oh my God, they are ridiculously cute. I love the way they use this sand pit and I forgot to tell you something absolutely crucial when we built it. This flower pot has one of the herb scent enrichments hidden underneath it, which means the wombats will actually go up and sniff around in the sand castle, which is great. Don't forget, if you wanna join the Explorers Club, then hit the join button below this video. I will add your name to the Explorers Club plaque that we looked at earlier and I'll send you a link to the Discord so you can come and chat to me and each other whenever you like. Your support, whether financial or just emotional, is much appreciated as always. Before we go, let's jump up into the drone cam. Here's the area as it was at the start of the episode. And here it is now. We are so close to finishing this area and next week's episode is gonna be massive. I will see you then.
Thanks for watching. Bye.